I haven't done this in such a long time, you guys, so I'm back. <laughs> All right, hello everybody, Andrea here with Soda Fit. I appreciate you for dropping by my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing this little number I have here. I'm going to be talking about some of the fitting topics that I have first because if you're here to see the fitting information, then that's what I have for you. If you're here to see the pattern review, <laughs> it's not much to review. It's a shirt dress. What else you want to know about, okay? But anyway, I'm Andrea. I teach you how to fit patterns for your body, your taste, and your style. Style being your fashion, your body being your fit, and your taste being the things you like to wear. This dress I'm wearing is a McCall 7242. Now, I was going to copy the original dress that I wanted, which was this dress here. It was a really nice dress that I've always wanted to duplicate. So basically, it's a regular shirt dress. It has the high collar and I never, I never really buttoned it up at, at the top. So I felt like something that laid across my body and laid flat here would be good to wear. Now, now this one has the long sleeves it, because of the long sleeves you know you have to use a lighter weight fabric the one that i originally had is very very <laughs> polyester so it didn't work very well even though it was a short sleeve it still was very hot also this one has the placket that is a regular facing so i wouldn't say placket because placket means separate there were a lot of buttons to put on here because i put the buttons two and a half inches apart as far as the sleeve is concerned i did leave it at the same length that they have it's a nice little curved sleeve that gives it almost a sort of a trumpet sleeve which is why you have it go in and then out and then of course it's got the basic elastic in it you really don't have to have any special skills to create a casing for the elastic it's a really easy fit now as far as the fit is concerned let me pull my bra up see here okay maybe that'll work okay that's better now that I <laughs> put my bra on <laughs> I didn't know I was recording I'm gonna leave that in here because you guys have to understand that when you have situations going on with your bra then that's gonna change the fit okay so this changed the fit <laughs> So let's go over the little alterations that I made for the top to help you to understand how I got it to fit without a dart. Now, a lot of things you can use a dart. So when you have a larger bust, you really need to have darts. If you don't have darts, then you're going to end up with this area here. All the areas around, you're going to end up with the excess going here. And this part here needs to at least fit around your body. So I put it in the side seam to help me to be able to get the little curve I want. And then I put a curve on the side. Now, at first I lengthened it to handle any of the, so it will hang straight right across here when I had the gathers in it from the elastic it wouldn't hang straight if i hadn't done a few little tweaks that i'll show you in the next part of this video which is going to be the part where i show you how i do the fit some of the most important areas that you're going to fit is your shoulders your bust and your waist and your hip when you have changes that are beyond your control aside from gaining weight that's you know Sometimes, a, 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 you know, out of your control and sometimes it is, <laughs> depending on how much you want to eat. So, or not exercise. Either way, let's talk about the bone structure of our body. Now, the bone structure of our body matters so much. When our body gets older or when we have accidents or break something, our bones shift, change, and rotate or do whatever it does to cause fit to change and fit to become different for us. I am now at this point where personally I am learning some new things about my body. This is why I hope you guys are on this journey with me. Now, does that mean that I can't fit you? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I know what I'm doing when it comes to you because I can take a look at your body and do what I do best and that's the fit. But when you are working with a moving target as I am doing right now, as we are moving through this period of time for the last six months and three more months to go, because this area across my shoulder is moving, it's my moving target. It's something that I can't change or fit fit properly until it's over until it's healed and done so i ask that you 
follow along and see how I work through my journey and my body changes because I know that's what you work through. All the teachings I do, whether it be private lessons or whether it be patrons, it doesn't matter. We all work together to fit because fit is always going to be a moving target unless you are a mannequin. Our bodies, our bellies, everything grows and gets smaller and grows and gets smaller. It could be from one day to the next year, or it can be from one morning to the evening, our body might change with bloating and everything else that goes with it. A lot of the times when we're working with different uh, garments as or even fabrics, you can see these different changes that happen. So let's talk about the fit. All right, let's go ahead and trace this pattern. This is the front pattern. I am actually grading the pattern as I trace it using a Sharpie marker. The marker will bleed through the pattern tissue. At the neckline, I have the same process as in my previous video, which is how to grade, how to increase the size of a pattern. When I grade up from the size 14 to the size 16, I still use the same center front because I did not change that one. I make sure that I move my bust dart over by one inch and then I draw in or trace those areas that I utilize as far as the tracing is concerned. So really this just helps to get the dot the pattern onto the pattern paper faster and also helps me to grade it at the same time. This is where you can see I'm making sure that I put the pocket note pocket points on and check the grain lines. Now I just did a full bust adjustment using the pivot and slide method. So you can see where I swung it out on the side and then brought it back in. When I get ready to trace this or trace this, you'll see where I made that change. It becomes curved on the side. And in some places I have to make sure that the marker bled through well enough for me to see it. I added one inch at the bus dart. That's why I wrote that in. I always like to write in all the changes I made on the pattern as I trace it so that I will have all of those areas. I also, at each corner of the um, pattern or the neckline or the underarm seam, I always like to make sure I write in what size I used at that point which is, for instance, at the shoulder seam, I used the size 14, and at the neckline, I used the size 14. So now let's go ahead and move on to uh, marking the pattern and measuring it for my size. You can see at the bottom, I measured the length, and at the length, I saw that I need two inches. So I pivot and slide down, to match what I have by just putting little dots and then drawing it. So I'll come back and make sure I slide it down to get the same shape of the lower portion of the pattern. And as I talk about this through the next clip, you'll see where that curve happens a little more. I did come back and take some of the length off, I think, because I wanted it to be a little bit less plus on in the front. And I also made sure to include the portion that required the section of the garment for the elastic casing that's at the waistline. I also like to make sure I write in this information so that there won't be any mistake as I come back through. Double checking all my notches is important. Probably should have done that first. But at this point, I remember that I was... Probably it would have been probably better off had I gone ahead and added more at the underarm seam or more at the shoulder seam. Now, I am going to do the same thing to the back. In the back, you can see I'm penciling in what size based on my measurements across my back. Then I am getting rid of all of the pleating in the back. I just don't like pleating. So I pin that out or tape it. You can do whichever one you want. I didn't do a sway back adjustment in the sense that you would think, which is normally for me, I would add just a little bit extra at the top and take some off at the center back. Now I'm going to test the length of the front because the front gets a little bit longer with the curve. So I am 
doing the truing as I go before I adjust the back pattern piece if it is needed to be adjusted. So I'm just checking that. So anyway, this is where I went ahead and traced it. I didn't do too much grading in the back, but I did add a little bit of curve under the arm. All right. Now, you can see at the bottom, I did go ahead and lengthen it. So that's the end. Let's keep talking. <laughs> Talk about the bottom part of it is where I had to take in the back on the center fold. I did a sway back adjustment built in. I had to take some of this off because it was too long. And I probably showed you guys that it, it became too long here. And so I had to shorten it. But in the front, right above the bust, under the bust, I left it curved so that it will be long right in that area that particular area it would normally be a bus dart and so i had to grade it out from the side seam back up to the front at the center seam to make the difference and allow for that different amount so like i said on the side seam i went ahead and i curved the seam a little bit to bring it in so that it will not cause any problems so the side seam has a curve in it and then it curves out at the bust to give me that extra width. But at the waist, I made sure to bring it in. So that's pretty much what I wanted you to see as far as that's concerned. Okay, so you can see that the curves happen, they go up and they go down. It's based on that happen at the bottom of a garment, no matter what garment it is. It all happens so that you can keep this part straight, okay? You want to always keep the waistline at a horizontal to the floor. No matter what happens to the seam allowance itself, the seam allowance can be crooked as a whole get out because your body is different. Your waistline might tilt or your bust might need more room to go across. So your, your waistline could be high in the front and low in the back or high in the back and low in the front or vice versa. Either way, that keeps your horizontal balance line where it needs to be and it keeps your hem straight where it needs to be. So all these areas that look like curves, they become straight after you finish or get ready to wear them. It has pockets, it has everything you need. I have the, uh, I think I already said that I have the French seams everywhere. I have French seams in the side seams, both up here in the arms, inside the arm, arms eye and everywhere else. But I really like the dress, especially that it has the pockets and everything. I really like that. This is something that I think everybody should have. A... That's my review of McCall 7242. If you guys are having any other changes in your body, let me know that you, which, how you are dealing with it. And, you know, because I'm <laughs> my analytics show that I have a whole lot of people on here way older than me. Y'all got a lot of uh, important information you could probably school me on. Let me know. <laughs> Leave it in the comments. For everybody else, I appreciate you. And all of you guys, especially you new folks, I appreciate you for dropping by my channel. You guys have a wonderful day, afternoon, and life. Thank you. Andrea is out. See you on the other side of the internet.